hello again. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so ridiculous sometimes. It is so freaking hot. Oh my God, it's so annoying. I am not a fan of the heat, you guys. It's not even <clears throat> remotely a thing. I just do not care for, I just do not care for the heat. It's not, it's not my jam, y'all. Okay, so this week, oh, wait, I gotta start this properly. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm your host, Not For Possession, Narcissa DeVille, and welcome to hell. <laughs> Hold on a second. I got like sparkles all up in these glasses, which is just what I need. So in case you were wondering, I am wearing right now for my eyeshadow Moon by the Galaxy Chic, um, from the Galaxy Chic palette from BH Cosmetics. I've actually don't know if I've heard of BH Cosmetics. It sounds vaguely familiar, but Boy, do I love this look though. It's so pretty. Okay, so this week, I, or this week, this week, I wanted to talk to you about, as if I only make one video a week. Today, I wanted to talk to you about just kind of my thoughts on writing advice and why I think we should take writing advice with a grain of salt. So I originally recorded this video last Thursday Unfortunately for me, I was absolutely exhausted when I recorded this video, so I don't feel like I made any kind of sense. This is also when I recorded the Jump Cut Queen video, and I don't feel like in either video I made a whole lot of sense because I was just so, so freaking tired, and I was just like, I was like, what are you even saying? Like I'm watching, I was watching the Jump Cut Queen video as I was editing it. And even as tired as I was, I was like, what? What are you, okay. So I definitely felt like probably gonna have to re-record this video as well. So here we go. Basically, you know, the premise of the video was essentially that I feel like there is in the writing world, there's a lot of people who, you know, self-proclaimed experts who want to tell you what the best way to do XYZ is, you know, how to get a million followers to your blog, how to, you know, get published in 12 easy steps, all this kind of stuff, and just generalized writing advice. And the thing I feel about that is, and what kind of set this all off for me was an article in, I believe, The Daily Beast, in which a writer said the phrase, if you actually the title of the article was if you want to be successful as a writer write every day or quit now and I just take such issue with that statement and with that claim I get what they meant and I get that it was meant to be allegorical it was meant to you know be dramatic I get that the problem is I think first of all people are gonna take that literally second of all I think there's it's one of those things where it's a piece of writing advice that I don't think we need to stick to a hundred percent listen there's a lot of good advice out there there are a lot of authors with I believe sound advice you know Stephen King famously said you know you should read a lot and write a lot I think that's a very sound piece of writing advice but to say if you want to be successful you have to do this this and this I feel like that's a dangerous position to put yourself in as someone giving the advice because ultimately advice is something this is what worked for me this is what maybe has worked for other people but that isn't necessarily going to be what works for you and your life and your schedule and your situation listen I write pretty I would say I write almost every day something I don't necessarily write my novel every day or a novel on on a novel every day but I'm writing something pretty much every day so to me you know the whole write every day thing kind of works for me but kind of doesn't you know I'm always working on a project somewhere but 
you know, I do a lot of other writing things besides just novels. I've been writing essays for a long time. It's something I've really come to enjoy. It isn't a novel, but it's a different way of approaching writing. I've been blogging for the past 10 years. Again, not a novel, but it's a different way of approaching writing and it's a, a way of approaching writing that I really greatly enjoy. So there's that. Actually, I think I've been blogging almost 11 years because it's 2017. 2006, 2017, yeah, that's right. Um, I can't math in case you were wondering. English side, yeah, uh, math, not so much. But anyway, so, you know, it's one of those things that I feel like that's a piece of writing advice that if it works for you and it's something you think makes sense to you, you should follow that writing advice. And I think that's true of any writing advice. If it makes sense to you, if it fits with what you kind of feel is the right thing to do, then great. But if it doesn't make sense to you, if it doesn't work for you, then I think it should be something you take with a grain of salt. And that's any advice. That's even writing advice that I give. Because the way I look at it, what works for me is not going to work for you. What works for someone else is not going to work for me. That's just the way it is. If you're getting advice from someone who writes fiction and you want to write nonfiction, that's not really going to help you because they're two completely different things. If you're getting advice on how to write a crime novel and you're interested in writing romance, that isn't going to help you. They're different genres. And it's not that there isn't writing advice that's not somewhat universal and that fits across a lot of genres. There is. There's always going to be advice that's kind of universal. Reading a lot and writing a lot is universal advice. But, you know, I don't necessarily subscribe to the theory that you should read books that are bad just because they can teach you a lesson of what not to do. That's great. And I get why someone would say that. But I don't want to taint my mind with, a book that I don't enjoy just because it might teach me a lesson. To me, that is not a good way to spend my time as a reader. One of the things I have always had a problem with, <clears throat> one of the things I've always had a problem with as a writer is being a very, very picky reader. I have a very, very difficult time because I if I'm not interested in a book within the first few pages, I struggle to read that book. I just do. And there's been many a book that I have not finished because it just was like, oh God, this is gonna be a long book, I can already tell. It has to catch me very, very quickly in. And that's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a fact about me. But I forced myself once to read a book that I did not like and to this day I do not like this book and I don't want to make it a point to you know detract any author and I don't want to make it a point to be negative anymore because I've done that for many many years as a blogger I had some kind of more negative posts and I'm not proud of that that is part of my history however but I, I'm not going to talk about that book or why I didn't like it just because it's I don't really have anything positive to say about it, to be honest, and I really don't feel like I could probably go on about it for a long time, and I just, it's not worth it to me. It is a book that I read. It is not a book I'm happy that I read. It's a very, very popular book, and good on them, you know? They're published, and they're successful, and I'm still working on it, so, you know, maybe I'm the incorrect one. There's a lot of people who like that book. The point is, Art is subjective and sometimes you don't like what everyone else likes and that's not a bad thing but for me I think as a reader and a writer I don't think the precious time that we have to work on any given project I don't think it should be spent reading a book that you aren't going to like or that isn't any good to you I don't think that serves you particularly well. If there is a book that's good and that you like, and there's a difference, by the way, between a well-written book and a book that you just, or you actually like, I would say. 
there can be there's probably plenty of books that are very well written that I just have no interest in reading and there's probably books that are not well written that you know I still enjoy so for me I think it's kind of hard to say you know read everything even if it's not very good well again it begs the question what defines what's good or not to me if I like it that makes it pretty good technically it may not be you know the best written book but you know I remember one of the quotes uh, one of my friends gave to me a few years ago on my writing when I let her read it she said it's not Shakespeare but it's not Twilight either which made me laugh because my first thought was, well, I'm not trying to be either of those people. So it's good that it's not either of those people. And what I understood that to mean was that obviously she felt Shakespeare was the highest form of writing and that's fine. That's understandable. I don't have anything against Shakespeare. It's not about that. But it's an odd comparison when I don't think I'm writing, I was, even then I never wrote anything that was even adjacent to Shakespearean. So for me, it was kind of a very weird thing to say. And I, I may have felt some type of way about it at the time. Like I was like, okay, thanks. You know, I, it's, it's, a, it's a backhanded compliment to say the least. But my biggest problem with it again was I'm not trying to be either of those people. And I think that's the most important thing. You have to be your own type of writer, whatever that means. And ultimately the advice you should follow should be the advice that seems the most sensible to you and works for you. And that isn't to say you shouldn't challenge your worldview and what you think is right about writing or you think is correct. Definitely you should, you know, find things that challenge what you think about writing. And I'm not saying don't listen to the advice or don't take the advice but what you do with it and whether you apply it to yourself is the difference. The way I look at a lot of writing advice these days is I will read almost all of it. I read quite a bit of it, which is how I got to that article about the person who said, um, read every day or quit or write every day or quit. Now I will read the advice, but I'm not necessarily going to take it and apply it because I don't necessarily agree with it. So take it in, hear it, understand it for what it is, and then say, okay, this doesn't apply to me. I don't, I don't think this makes sense and move on. Because unfortunately, a lot of writing advice tends to be very conflicting. A lot of writing advice is like do X and the other one says do Z and not X. So it's kind of like, okay, but which of you is correct? And you can base it on, well, this person has more readers. I've heard of them before. It has this, this, this. I don't think any of those are necessarily the most logical answer. It's very, and let me just say this too. It's very easy to give advice. It is not so easy to take that advice. There's a lot of advice that I have given over the years that it's very easy for me to say, but to do it myself, that's tricky. One of the things I'm trying to learn, and I'm probably going to make a video about this later, I'm trying to learn to not let things that don't affect me, affect me. And what I mean by that is there are certain things that have gone on or that go on in general that I think don't have anything to do with me. And I don't mean politically or anything like that because that's a whole different story. But there's a lot of things that I feel like I am annoyed by or I take personally that have literally nothing to do with me. And I'm like, okay, but you need to take a step back and realize this isn't about you. This has nothing to do with you. Why are you letting it run your life? Why are you letting someone else's drama run your life or things you cannot change? And it's such a weird feeling because I am someone who has always been like, always needs to be in control or feel like I'm in control. I am a Virgo in that sense. Um, like I always am a control freak. I need to be in control. I prefer to be in control. It 
works better for me. It makes more sense to me. But I'm learning there's something a little bit freeing in realizing that some things are just out of your control. And you know what? That's not a bad thing. And you can make that work. You know, when I, I and I think that's a lesson to be learned in trying to get a literary agent as I have been. At the end of the day, I've controlled what I've controlled. I did the best I could, sent out the best, you know, work that I could, the best query letter, the best synopsis that I could. And that's out of my control now. Whether someone accepts me or doesn't is out of my control. What's in my control is how I handle that acceptance or rejection. Those things are in my control. Everything else isn't. And I'm trying to learn that that's an important way to look at things. A lot of things aren't really in my control and I've given myself a lot of grief trying to convince myself that things were more in control in my control than they were. I've lost a lot of sleep trying to do that. And frankly, there's something to be said for just saying, you know what? Some stuff isn't in your control. And how people react to you and what is going to ultimately be what works for you or doesn't work for you. You know, a lot of that isn't necessarily in your control. So you do what you can. You work as hard as you can. You follow, you know, you do what you think is the best thing to do and what makes the most sense. Everything else, you know, what can you do? I feel like a little bit this video is just a little more random than I would have liked. And it's kind of funny because I still feel like even though I'm more awake and I'm not as exhausted as I was when I recorded the first video, I feel like it's similar, similarly kind of all over the place still. So we'll, we'll see in the playback and maybe I'll merge this with the old video. That would be really jarring, wouldn't it? Just two different outfits. Two different looks, not jarring at all. Anyway, if you like this video, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, we hope you enjoyed your stay. Do you like my new nails? I did this like galaxy kind of, I think of them as pride nails to be honest, because this looks a little rainbowy. I love it. Rainbow pride nails. Ooh, sharp. Monster Nails.